we're going to cover some Bitcoin Ripple entries. Currently, what's happening is we've got this inside bar formation that had just spiked up, met some resistance, and then come back down. Let me just zoom in a bit. Okay, so Overwatch penetration just here in this kind of box here. So we've got a um, box over that Overwatch penetration. So what that means is, is that when prices come up into this area, that's when the Overwatch has come into this upper boundary. Okay, cool. So once it's in that upper boundary, we'll wait for it to come out and wait for it to give us a nice divergence. Okay, that is a divergence. So at that point, it's a case of okay, cool. Um, inside bars, you can try and trade it, but it's. Um, it's looking strong at this point, okay? So it's come up. Now, at this point, we've had the third divergence. So this is one, two, three. Okay, I've got that white dot there. So we've got the third divergence. Now, I'm just going to um, top that. So that, that little uh, line is covering the top. So there's one, two, three divergences. Top off the third divergence, and then see if we can look to take a trade. Now, we've had this candle, which has penetrated up over there close back down so that's a good sign so I've basically started to build the position here we've just had this long bar come in which is an inside bar so I'm you know, gonna hold it for now um, and we'll have the stop loss just just a bit of that because we might see a poke out and then come back down so we'll just um, watch that in fact we can just put a little top off on that one so the reason these these bars are colored it's a um, it's signifying that's an inside bar. Okay, cool. So we'll wait for that to come out. So I'll just show you some more examples of this, of how this is played out. So the price has come into the Overwatch territory, and, and as you can see from this white box, as the price has come into that, we, we're in there. Now, if we just locate these bottoms, okay, and we look at these bottoms on the Overwatch, there's not really a divergence there. They are level, but they're kind of sloping down a bit. Okay, so just bear that in mind. It needs to be a clean divergence. And then, you know, we have moved up. No more divergences here, as you can see, they're all lower highs. We make this big move down. Divergence is here, okay. And then we can potentially look to take a trade. Now, bearing in mind, this has been moving down, so it's like one, two. It's had this big, big kind of time in this area here and then we've come back down for a divergence so that's nice that's a strong move down as well so if, if we don't see this at least push lower than here then we can start to look at that as a good example okay so six our trade there now when it moves up into the next point as you can see it's hit the overwatch you know this is the this is the time when you can potentially take a partial profit i mean it's still a four hour trade if you take half off the table you've got two hours you've doubled your risk your risk-free trading you've still got um, skin in the game and it's a good move summarize overwatch boundary penetration waiting something white divergence idea then that's coming over the space of 18 hours 12 18 hours and then we've, we've got so a good breather a good rest from the charts that is you know, 12, 18 hours, take a break, go do something, go fishing, go, go biking, whatever. Okay, so back to back examples here. So this is a long, before that, um, overwatch boundary. So it's come up into the, the penetration. And by the way, you know, I've traded these boundary penetrations. Do not, do not take the entry on just the penetration because you're basically trying to go against the grain and it's, it's not gonna work. Boundary penetration, moving on. Okay, it's moved out. So when the red box ends, it's coming out of the boundary. Comes out of the boundary, makes a high, pop up to the high here. Divergence, white dot, that's what that is. Okay, now put that white dot there because that's that's where the entry is going to be. Um, as this is kind of bounced off the scalper, made a new high. Look, look at the uh, the top off. I've just topped that off. Hasn't even closed. So I mean, you could you could have this super tight. But what I'm, ex what I'm just trying to manage is that third spike up, like a, a fake out or something like that, and we'll, we'll capture that, and then it will move down into profits. So if you do tighten up the stop loss, I mean, you're talking 11 hour trade down to the, the low here. Have we got another one? So there's, there's two here, as you can see, boundary penetration has come into it, come out. Look at this um, low tide line coming 
right through there. Let me just make it a bit thicker. So you see this big thick line moving right through the middle of the chart here. Coming down, overwatch penetration, bam. Okay, we've moved out of it. Under so a retest of the undertide of that low tide, and then we've, we've had a move down again. I'm not saying this is a, a trade or anything, but you know, they're just details to pay attention to. And look what's happened, we've come down, underside, move lower. Okay, so move lower, and this is where the divergence has come in. So, you know, if we try and find this divergence, no divergence, no divergence, no divergence, right at this point here, there's a divergence. Okay, that point could be the entry. So if we just look back up here, uh, right there, we have made another move lower, a couple, couple of little dips here, but nothing too major and nice move. So the point here, this, this dot here, you know, bottom that outlook, okay, now as you can see this, this kind of square here is where you can really scale in, so the price is coming to this point, okay, we've got the divergence. You've got the uh, boundary penetration. Everything's looking good here, whatever the upper time frames are saying. Okay, cool. So I'm going to rewind the chart just to make it a bit more interesting. Okay, so at this point here, look, we spiked, then an inside bar is forming. Okay, so you can take this trade and, you know, just put that there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, like, say, we'll risk 3%. Okay, and we're going to take three shots at this. Right, and I'm just going to talk about where I would where I would put these shots. So this candle's printed, divergence is happening, and that's where we take the entry. So we'll just put the entry right there. One percent. Okay. Next candle comes in. Look at that. It already shut into profit, and then it's closed down. So I'm just going to hold for now that that one percent, that shooting star. Reason being is because of this underside. It's tried to spike up close below. Okay, that point there is where we could take another 1%. So take another 1% in there. Same stuff loss. Okay, so now we've got 2%. So as you can see there, it shot into profit, shot down and then closed back up. Okay, just hold for a second because I don't want to I don't want to layer in them too close. This is this is the mistake that I used to make a lot. Um, basically unload the gun before the moves happened. So it's just best to hold that. It's better to get smaller profits than any losses, okay? So if this moved up now with just 1% or 2%, then you can always add in as this moves up. But if this moves down and you're fully loaded, you're gonna be in a world of hurt. So just, just take the advice. Okay, okay, so at this point now, it's like, oh, Damn it, I made a mistake. So we're just gonna wait for this to turn back up. And as you can see, this, this peak here. So at that point, maybe start to look at putting that last one in because we've had like a accumulation type move. One, two, three. Now this third one hasn't gone any lower than that peak. So let's just see what the next one is. Okay, look, we've got an inside bar there. Okay, inside bar, so let's go. Third one. There. Same stop plus. Okay. So we've had three shots here, and, you know, each one is 1%. Now look at the R. So We've, we've kind of got the same profit target there. Now we've got 3.4, 4.6, and 5.6. So you see the difference with the same stop loss. Um, you're getting a 5.6R instead of a 3.4R. And, you know, all these averaged out for 3%. When you, when you finally arrive at this point, then it's game time. And as you can see, boom. That's very nice. Oh, look at that nice trade is coming in. So let's just follow this all the way back to where we're at now. Now this is the point where we had some trouble because we've had this trade, look, the overwatch boundary penetration come up, spike up into um, a new kind of peak, top that off, it's come up, formed a double top, fake out, and then we've, we've had that move lower. 
Okay, now we've had a big move lower, come up, retraced up, and then another move lower for a 2% trade. Then what's happened? Look, we haven't even gone into any of these lower boundaries. And then we're just moving sideways here for quite a while. So this is why I say we, we kind of need an additional um, high time frame. Because when we have this, you might be holding for um, you know this boundary penetration. This is why the, there's no hard and fast rules. But I just want to talk about what, what I would do here. Okay. So on that move down firstly, that's a nice profit. Okay, lock it in. Lock, lock some profits in, especially at this line. Okay. So as this has moved down here, you can lock the profit in. Move the stop loss to the low tide or even the wave. You know, if you want to get really max and you can use the scalper okay this scalper is very powerful so once it crosses back through the scalper you know you can be out or even a portion and as you can see it's moved back up to that retracement level and we're back above so this is the wave we're back above the wave low tide scalper everything's turned blue you know you don't want to be holding short positions when it's like this it has had another move down but as you can see here the problem the problem we have here is we've got no long signal so that's a problem so again this is why the lower time frame exists but let's let's see if we can just dissect this and see what we can find so first thing i can see is is we've got this divergence here we've got tiny tiny thing here okay and that's pretty much about it what we do have is we have um, an area around around this point here. When I when I draw that box on, okay, if you look, it's touched it exactly, okay, with the divergence. So that that's why I put that there. And then when we start measuring it with Fibonacci, you can see the seventy-eight point six is exact, okay, exactly. Now we've got some targets up here, so let's just draw a box and see. If this what we know it comes off. Got low tide bounce right there exactly. Whoops, missed it. Okay, nothing really happened. Just shot straight through it. Okay, so we're kind of where we're at now, and we've had that um oh no, sorry. So when you see this play out, you can see the um, power of the, the trend master and how it kind of Acts as like it's part of the, the, the price, part of the chart. Okay, so we're coming back up to the point where we're at now, and we've just had a, a couple more candles print, so let's just see exactly what happens here. So, as you can see, as this is poking up, I had to bounce off the trend master, uh, the scalper. Look at this. Um, Wave cloud holding up, so that one, two, that wave envelopes, uh, very cool. So one spike up, two spike up, inside bar there, this is where we're starting to build a position. Look, look at that, absolutely crazy, insane, very, very powerful entries. So let's see what can come off uh, with this. Okay, so now we've had that kind of inside bar, uh, we've had a bearish engulfing that inside bar there's another one moving down to the scalp now and I think if we get below this envelope then we can really you know we can we can add into the position and then weigh out so you know just to let you know this this is just a lower time frame scalp you know this isn't like any big moves there's going to be some future videos I'll do, do over the, the end of the week and the weekend about the wave charts high tide low tide etc and uh, just sewing all these examples together. Okay, what's going on guys? So we're uh, picked up back the next day after this move. So as this is a uh, poking out there, that's when it's going through the previous examples, comes down, touches on the scalp. I was a little bit worried when, when this uh, candle closed up above this level, but um, look what's happened again. Big, big bearish engulfing candle. And then the following one down below, the scalper and the boundary envelope and then we start to top one all the way down. A couple of things to take away, okay, falling down. Um, un underside test of that boundary envelope there, okay, that's an exact 
um, you know, detail there. Okay, next fall down to the wave level. So you've got one here. And then there's the underside boundary retest. I mean, I'm just going over the major um, minor details here because this is this is what this is what counts. This is what um, you know it's going to add or take out capital from your trade. Okay, underside retest of those candles moves lower and then holds out for a bit here. I haven't really looked at it, but I'm suspecting it's this area to the left. Um, you know, it's it's resistance to support. Try to push up now. This wicks in. Um, interesting because it's pushed up past the scalper, past wave, pretty much to the underside of this envelope again, look. Okay, so this is why I put this envelope here, is um, it's like a, like a Bollinger Band type, type move, and um, it can signal the upper deviations. And then it's come back down closed, pretty much the low end of the support there, so if, once again, we just take this, this tool, just level off that that area and when you start to see this um, I can't really see one second so when you start to see this breakdown below pushes up comes back down so this is just like continuation type clues comes back down look bang bang straight on the low tide lovely holding on to the uh, scalper level look at this so this is a uh, inside bar fakey pattern now that, that is a surefire sign and I mean for, for the inside bar fakey pattern to happen underneath the wave retesting the underside of great uh, continuation bam move okay so that's it um, you know I'm not saying basically what I'm waiting for is boundary penetration here on the lower time frame but what we've had is is we've had um, a one and a two okay so this this is like a level this is like a level playing field here. They're both as low as each other, but you've got this lower this lower high here. So I'm not going to put the divergence on there, but it has started to move up um, on the overwatch to the midline and then we've had another move down. So this move down, okay, this is where I've started to scale in a portion and when I mean a portion I mean like 0 0.0% of the entry. Because we've got this this bigger divergence here, so from here to here, we've got this divergence, divergence, okay cool, now yeah we'll just we'll just wait and see what happens here but we have uh, test, tested the underside of this um, low tide here so it's going to be interesting to see what happens next but I think uh, the next time that the boundary is penetrated here that's when I'll do some updates but oh we might see a, a move back to the upside of the, the low tide and some sort of updates with regards to these trades there and then I'll be back so the takeaway I've got these entries on BitMix okay now when, when I say entries, I mean, these are small, I don't like shorting, the main reason is it's because the, the capital requirements when you're shorting are a lot higher, fees are a lot higher, um, yeah it's just something that I don't like to do. Alright cool, so I hope you enjoyed that, cheers.